I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like. All right, everybody, a couple quick things before we move on. Uh, Some important uh, political prisoner news. And again, I am uh, working off of and encouraging all of you to do the same. The Freedom Archives prisoner news newsletter. Uh, So just go to freedomarchives.org and sign up for that. And you get constant updates about uh, what's happening with uh, the political prisoner world and uh, the, the the more broadly speaking uh, imprisoned community. Uh, and one of them is, uh, of course, there was some good news offered the other day or last week or within the last couple of weeks about David Gilbert, uh, uh, support of the Black liberation struggle and still imprisoned for it. Uh, a political prisoner that even uh, white leftists don't talk about which I continue to think is very odd for all of the discussion of Chelsea Manning and and Julian Assange, which is justified and righteous uh, for all of the discussion over the years of Daniel Ellsberg and et cetera. None of those folks even talk about David Gilbert, which which I think is very telling about where they are politically uh, and very telling about not only how white supremacy works, but how genuine uh, uh radical or revolutionary politics are constantly coming up uh, headlong against that wall of liberalism, uh, which is is often disguised as progressive or radical. Uh, but anyway, so but what they're calling here, and this is from friends of David Gilbert dot org, uh, where you can get more time is short support parole for David Gilbert. Uh, and even though he was granted uh, clemency, all that means is that, as as I misunderstood, admittedly, all that means is that the governor has said he can go up for parole, but that does not mean that he will be paroled. So uh, please join, go to friendsofdavidgilbert.org, and uh, uh, you can click these links for more information uh, and get your parole guide letter, letters. Um, they want us to send them by September 8th, so we still have a couple of days uh and to to get them in the mail anyway so please uh do that uh as well we we anyway he certainly deserves that level of support and want to encourage people to to uh, uh offer it so we don't want to because again we want to encourage allies to be in support of black liberation and if they get snatched up and punished they should be respected and uh, uh, addressed as political prisoners that they are, and we should do whatever we can to help them, not the least of which signing some some letters and petitions. Um, there was also, and, and I've been endeavoring to, to have her on, uh, uh, and will continue to, that is uh, uh, Shupavu, um, the, the partner and wife of uh, Kevin Rashid Johnson, political prisoner that I've been I'm um, supporting for a long time and whose uh, uh, imprisonment did not necessarily begin with political activity in the 1990s, but certainly has been exacerbated and worsened because of that political activity. Uh, and as our legendary political prisoner, formerly political prisoner, Jaleel Montekin, is calling for, he's in support of Kevin Rashid Johnson and calling uh, that that uh, we and as many of us as possible call Ohio Governor DeWine and demand that Kevin Rashid Johnson be immediately transferred out of Lucasville, a uh, notorious white supremacist prison, which is hell bent on murdering uh, Kevin Rashid Johnson. Uh, this is a story out of S. Uh, San Francisco Bay View, uh, but we you can also go to RashidMod.com, uh, I believe is the correct address, and uh, not only learn more about Kevin, but find out how to contact and support him, uh, and we encourage people to do that as well. Um, because again, same kind of thing. We don't want our folks getting locked up, but we certainly want them, if they're there, to become radicalized. And then once that occurs, we don't want them to suffer 
uh, additional punishment. So we want to encourage that people uh, be in support and hopefully we can get uh, uh, Shupavu on again to update us and hopefully with some good news around that situation. Um, there was, I believe, I think those were the two. I mean, there are a number of others. Um, stories that have been coming out from the uh, newsletter that is a PP newsletter or the prisoner newsletter out of uh, Freedom Archives, uh, including calls for renewed support around Sundiata Akoli, uh, Palestinian prisoners, et cetera. Uh, so, so uh, and uh, we definitely want to support their uh, release and, um, or the, in terms of Palestinians, the end of the occupation. Uh, and the abuse of prisoners there as well. So I just wanted to quickly uh, mention those. We'll continue to try to track those stories and encourage more support for those folks as well. Um, including, by the way, we're going to, um, it looks like I'm just securing an interview for some point on BPM. Uh, um, with uh, an activist who's been in touch recently uh, and been granted permission to um, interview Jamil Alamine, formerly known of as H. Rap Brown. Uh, uh, I was happily one of the signatories to this letter that went out some time ago, uh, an open letter to the Bureau of Prisons and State of Georgia by concerned academics. And uh, one of uh, the, our, uh, the organizers of this and our colleagues uh, on this um, letter has been granted permission, uh, that is Arun Kundani has been granted permission to uh, uh, interview Brother Jamil Alameen. So we look forward to hearing from Arun either before or after or both. Um, uh, to get an update on his situation. And we want certainly to support the release, of course, of Jamil Alameen. And um, there's, again, just this odd and eerie silence on these issues from so many who uh, should at minimum not be silent, uh, if not m being more actively engaged in more overt ways in, in helping the situation. But uh, so we'll continue to, to to keep track of that on this show and, of course, throughout the platform as well. Uh, and look forward to hearing from Arun uh, and Jamil um, sooner than later. Uh, by the way, before I move on, I want to thank uh, I, I forgot to give him a shout out. The, 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 the our little introductory comedic video voiceover from Geechee Motivator uh geechee y'all shout out to him and look forward to playing uh some more of those and getting some more done for for us um uh and uh yeah anyway and i also want to let folks know that that what i'm trying to do uh and in fact i'm not even gonna lie i'm not even gonna front it's it's modeled off of um uh what I wanted to, to show real quick before I get to the piece, uh, you know, to the, to, to the crux of the matter for me, uh, something I'm borrowing from uh, the Jimmy Dore show and want to see if we can, can not only thank our, um, to not only thank our um, members, but to see if we can increase and get some more uh, so what I've been, what I've started doing with, with my show, I mix what I like live is, uh, obviously going live. And then what I wanted to start doing is immediately after the fact, um, making the live video in its entirety members only. So members can enjoy the full, uh, unedited live version of the show at their convenience and in being and in for, to thank them for their membership. Uh, and uh, I know it's for me, at least, I hope you all don't feel this way, but maybe, but if you do, for me, it's moving slower than I would like uh, given my ten tendency towards impatience, but we are 
uh, the membership fees, the, the revenue we're generating is not only distributed throughout the platform, but is being used in, in uh, um, you know, significant um, portions to to develop uh, what I hope at least will in part be used for investigative journalism, documentary, filmmaking, all kinds of stuff. So if you are, um, uh, you know, someone who does that work or looking to do some side projects on that, definitely go to blackpowermedia.org and uh, uh, submit one of the, uh, the, the forum proposals and, and let us know, contact us. Um, but, but anyway, so, but, so we do encourage that people uh, join as a member, like, share, subscribe, and click the bell and all that. But, but anyway, so that's that. So, so members get the live, immediately afterwards at their convenience in its entirety. Everyone else will get uh, the live if they watch it live, and then we'll get, you know, the segments of the shows as we put them out subsequent, um, giving it a shot. Uh, uh, anyway, but I say that to say, not only to let folks know what's going on here, but just as a preview, I did even, so as I'm saying, what I am saying about political prisoners, who supports, who covers, who doesn't, Jimmy does not. He's not politically where we are. I don't look for him to do that. But I did notice that he did something the other day that I thought was pretty funny. Uh, uh, and I do enjoy the show and I do for what he does and his thing. I enjoy what they do. So I wanted to play this little clip because he actually ends up making a point that I like to make all the time that I think I can make in this case vis-a-vis -vis him and his crew. But uh, let's just check this out real quick. And um, I think it'll, you'll see exactly what I'm saying. It's not our fault what came out. We didn't go into Egypt. Well, we, we did. wound up with mean, the Muslim we brother. We Egypt. We were supporting and propping up Mubarak for 30 years, even as we were cheering for all the Tahrir Square demonstrators as though we were on their side. It was our government that kept Mubarak in power, just like we've done across the entire Muslim world. I'm and, it, and, no, but, and, and it's amazing for you to say that, well, look at all these Muslims. The minute you give them a little bit of freedom, they go wild and they start being all violent. How can you be a citizen of the United States, the country that has generated more violence and militarism in the world over the last five or six decades and say, look at those people over there, they are incredibly violent. We play a significant role in what has been happening in the Middle East because we've well, been interfering and dominating that region in order to have access to the oil. I wasn't talking about Israel. violence, so, I was talking about theocracy. That doesn't happen here. Mm -hmm. no, well, and, okay, that doesn't happen here, but at the same time, Iran isn't invading lots of other countries and occupying them for a decade, nor are fundamentalist Muslim countries the way the United States is. So these things are interlinked because we are continuously interfering in that part of the world. And so to say- It's all our fault. It's not all our fault, but when you send your military for six straight decades into other countries to bomb them, kill their children and women and innocent men, we weren't prop up dictators, you know that, yeah, you take responsibility for your actions and say, to the extent that that region That religion is, goes back a thousand years before our revolution. So I don't think amazing. we can take all the blame. I don't think we should. I think we should take a lot of it. And there's lots of really? bodies and corpses that have been piled up in the name of Christianity and Judaism as well. Not recently. Have That's you heard of the awesome. occupation of the West Bank and, and Gaza for the last 50 years, motivated Jesus in part by Christ. extremist views of Judaism or the wars in Europe or the fact that there were generals in the United States saying we have to go and invade and destroy Iraq, a country of 26 million people, because our God is bigger? Lots of religions, not just Islam, produce violence. Well, well, if I could just well, make one quick point about that's Egypt. That's a silly I mean... liberal view <laughs> that all religions are alike because it makes you feel good. No, it makes you feel good true. to say our side is better. Those no, people it makes over you there feel good to put violent. a crown on your head and say, I'm a good person. How do I but prove you get, that? You get to ignore the responsibility that your own government has for the violence and instability in the world by saying, look, it's that primitive religion over there that's to blame. All right, it's time for... Mm. So that's what happens, and that's why Bill Maher doesn't have Glenn Greenwald on anymore. That remember he had Crystal Ball on; she humiliated him, and I, he doesn't. He likes to have right wingers on his show because he again nobody likes to have anybody to the left of them around. <laughs> okay, so a good a good way to get unpopular is to be to the left of people. They don't like it. They smear you constantly. That's why I'm, uh, uh, you you know you see what happens to this show. You see what happens to Glenn Greenwald. You see what happens to, to Julian Assange. You see what happens to Edward Snowden. 
You get to the left of people and they smear you. And that's exactly what happens. And they try to kill you. <laughs> so that was fun. Uh, and that's why Bill Maher doesn't like to bring on anybody who's to the left of him. And uh, it was funny. So that's where I was going with it. Um, just that point. He's right. People don't like having people on who are to their left. So that's why Jimmy doesn't have people on his show to his left. That's why as much as I watch the show, as much as I like the show, he is just like many of others in his his circles. They are limited in, on their leftward flank, uh, which is why he will talk about Chelsea Manning and Julian Assange, and he will say they should be free, and he will defend their right to, to have done what they've done and to do what they're doing. He will defend Ed Snowden. He will... Uh, uh, say we need a new party. We, you know, you know what he, what I mean. But well, I know what he means. But we know what he means with that. But he says we need a new party. He does advocate being left of the Democrats. He he does advocate even socialism. He does advocate universal health care. So when it comes to me, for me getting sort of the standard news of the day, because I do not and find it not necessary or helpful at all anymore, unless for the purposes of like a class experiment to watch CNN, MSNBC, et cetera, that's where I get my news. Or that's one of the sources for where I get sort of the daily news of uh, North America or the United States, not of Africa, not of Central and South America, not of the West, you know, the so-called West Indies or, or, or the Caribbean. Uh, but, you know, and again, I think he does a good job. I think the show is funny. I think his his crew for them is good. Uh, I like what they do with live shows. I would love to see uh, black radical versions of that, uh, where where we're able to do those same kind of things. Um, there's a lot I think we can learn from stylistically and 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 presentation wise from from anyway that I can learn at least. I appreciate it. Uh, and because I also don't see regularly produced black radical news content and again that's why i think what we're trying here at bpm is so important because i don't i don't I, and i get it there is the quote-unquote conscious community there are the there, there's endless amounts of youtube and i'm down i watch why i watch a lot of it increasingly so but but i'm talking about news analysis politics from a black radical perspective. I don't, I don't collectively produced. I don't, I don't see much of that. So anyway, that was really, that's where I was going with that. That was really it. Uh, and to make that point again, why we have to continue to not only support and raise up the, 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 the situation and voices of, of political prisoners. Uh, but, but, um, but because we are the left that no one has on. <laughs> Or that will have to be demonized. So that's where I was going with that. That was it. Um, uh, just to cover, just to quickly bring up and cover some of the the what is happening and what is to come, hopefully on this platform and beyond, related to uh, political prisoners and sort of a leftward political discussion. I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like.